Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark. And before we jump into today, I want to remind you guys to go over and take our Promote Profit Publish quiz. You can find it at www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. What are you going to get when you go over there and take that quiz? You're going to find out if you're really ready to publish because your book may be written, but is your marketing done? Is your plan done? What are you going to do with that book as a loss leader? There are a lot of questions that need to be answered. And hopefully you did that before you wrote the book, but I know a lot of you didn't. So again, go over and take that quiz, www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. And if you want to see some of these interviews live, go over and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Super Brand Publishing. All of these people are real people and they're over there. And, you know, some of them, like our guest today, actually put makeup on when they appear. So, you know, check them out because you might not see them like that otherwise, unless they're on here. So today's guest is Alexis Aldicott, and she is an international speaker, event consultant, and market strategist. For over a decade, she has traveled across the world teaching business owners how to strategically use their events to get clients. Often called the queen of event marketing, her clients have generated multiple six figures in sales from single events with less than 50 people attending. Mentioned over the years by experts like Callan Rush, Lisa Sasevich, and Sam Andrea Yancey, Alexis now combines her background in psychology, sales, copywriting, and education-based marketing, helping her clients grow millions of dollars from hosting and attending live events. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you, Julia. Happy to be here. Uh, fantastic. I, I can't even believe that I couldn't read a simple bio today. It's like we, <laughs> she and I both just got back from vacation. We're having like vacation brain farts, I think. <laughs> So but that means we're also refreshed and ready to rock. Well, I hope so, but I can't read now. So something we got lost in <laughs> translation, translation over vacation. I can't talk either. So events, online events, live events, we've kind of morphed a little bit with COVID from live to online. Um, let's talk about, you know, the marketing and the strategy and the offers and, and how all this works together. Yeah, and, and that is such a key point, Juliet, because that is why a lot of people fail with their events, quite simply, is, uh, you know, we hear about events, you should be hosting an event, you should be doing webinars, you should be doing three-day events, whatever it is, and they see these people having phenomenal success, and they want to have these five, six-figure paydays, right? Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't want to get 100 grand in their pocket in a couple of days? But what they don't realize is the people that are really having massive success with their events know three core things that have to be a part of the event. And if you don't know these three core things, if you don't integrate all of these three core things in your events, you're not going to have success or your success is going to be significantly capped because there are a lot of people out there doing events, even six figure events that could be doing multiple six figure events for the same amount of work getting triple their results. So these three core things that you and I are going to discuss today, Julia, it's make or break. It really is. Um, so if I haven't piqued your interest yet, definitely listen. And you want to incorporate all three of these things. It, it really is. It's, it's make or break. If you don't incorporate these that you may as well not do an event really. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. several years ago, there was a person whose event I was interested in on Facebook. And uh, I have to tell you, so I click on her Facebook where she's dropping the link in, you know, Hey, go here. It's a link to her website. It's not even the link to the page with the place to sign up. So I remember, oh I remember it was the very first of the year. It was one of those things like get yourself improved. So first day I click, I go to the website and I said, oh, I don't have time to go look around. She posts again a few days later. I go over to the website. I look around again. The, I finally find the page and it says, call me. I don't have time to call you. So there was this loop that was going on like continually where I would see the post. Yeah. I would think about the event again. And then it would be like, there's no way to sign up. I don't, I, and I literally just gave up. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about that marketing and why it's so important to have, to make everything easy for people. Yeah. I mean, we always have to be thinking about what is the event attendee experience? 
before they even become an attendee, right? What is the experience that they're having? And you just painted a picture beautifully of what happens is we don't think about, oh, well, they've got to click here and then they got to go there and then they got to put in this promo code and then they've got to register and then they have to confirm it. Like we have to make it super simple. One click takes you right there, done, right? Because we're all busy. There's so much information, so much stuff coming at us, so much that we have to do, wearing multiple hats in our lives and in our business that we have to make it super, super simple. And so that takes us back to the first place that we have to start, which is our strategy, the strategy for the event. And the user experience is part of that. Who is this event designed for? What are they inundated with? What are they busy with? What is happening with all the craziness going on in the world? How is that impacting their life? How can I make things easier for them, simpler for them? And how can I serve them? So with the strategy, we have to start by thinking about who is my ideal event attendee. And this kind of touches into the marketing a little bit, right? Because we've all heard about ideal client. Ideal client is important. But if your offer, right, which is always where you want to start with your event strategy, reverse engineer from the offer. If your offer is um, something specific, maybe it's a specific leg of your business, maybe you have multiple products, multiple offers and services. If let's say, we'll use you as an example, Juliet, with your publishing company. I'm sure you do some coaching and consulting, but then you also have probably a program that people could buy. Let's say you, you taught people how to speak to sell their book, but you also taught people how to write and publish a book. Your offer for that event is going to be geared towards which one are you selling? Which one are you trying to fill at the time? So based off of that strategy, I'm going to be selling, let's say, for example, you're, you're going to be selling the course on how to write and publish your book right? Let's say that's, that's the offer we're going to write. Then we need to reverse engineer from that offer and say, okay, what do my ideal clients, my ideal event attendees for this event that are going to buy that offer, what's going on in their world right now? How do they need to be served? How do they respond to being served? Are they going to be served better with like a boot camp style event where it's roll up your sleeves, let's get some stuff done? Are these like action takers? Like I'll pay to come to an event and I don't mind paying a high ticket to come to an event. If I know I'm going to go there, I'm going to show up, I'm going to get something done and then I'm going to leave. Or are they the kind of people that maybe need a little bit more time, need a little bit more nurture? They want to dip their toe in the water, make sure you know your stuff, but get some value so they walk away fulfilled. So maybe a three-day model, a three-day event might make more sense. They get to learn about you. They get some results, some value, and then you make an offer for the program. So we always have to think about not just what kind of event do I want to do because I'm a rock star and I'm cool. I'm going to host this event. No, it's about them. It's always about them. So what do they need? What's the offer and what's going to best serve them to see your offer is the best next step in their business. So we always, always, always have to be thinking about them. And so that's why I love that example you use, Julia, of the user experience, because it's about them. It's about them. So first and foremost with the strategy is what type of an event is going to support the attendee and is going to support the offer. That's where we have to start. That's amazing. So would you say, because I, I know when we had the in-person events, you know, it was action, it was networking, it was getting to know people. Do you feel like the online events have to be a lot action to keep people engaged? Do, do, is there a difference from the older, from the way we used to do things? Yes and no. I, I will go back to what I just said a minute ago. Think about the user experience of your ideal client. Are they, are your ideal client, the kind of person that wants that engagement, that wants the action? Or are they the kind of person that's like, no, just fire hose me. Just give it to me. I just want the goods, you know? And some people don't, some people don't want that. It's too much for them, but some people do. Um, so you want to think about what do they need? What kind of um, person are you dealing with? Um, and what are, what are their needs? But then also we do have to think about, yeah, Zoom fatigue is real. <laughs> yes. We've been in this for a while. At this point in time, it's COVID's not new. This isn't new. We've all been on Zoom forever, it feels like. So we do need to have some things that's going to keep them engaged. That also speaks to your speaking style and some little tactics and things that you can do, create some engagement. Um, but if your type of people do miss and crave that networking and that interaction with people. There's ways that you can pepper that in throughout your events. You can create breakout rooms. You can create networking experiences. Um, 
to create an experience for the people that are there to create that engagement piece. Um, and then, you know, some people are starting to get into the in-person events again. Now that things are opening up, people are getting vaccinated. There's protocols that you have to have in place if you're going to do an in-person event. But, um, you know, that's part of the strategy as well is knowing your, your tribe, knowing your people, are they more likely to come to an in-person event or a virtual event? Um, or should I consider a hybrid of the two? So people have both options of in-person versus virtual or both. So you that's a big piece, especially right now with what's going on that you have to think about in your strategy. Um, you know, hybrid events are kind of their own beast. It's uh, you're, you're basically hosting two events at the same time. So you have to have the budget for it. You have to have the team for it. Um, I'm not saying it's not lucrative and that it can't work, but um, you know, back in the day, pre-COVID, uh, people were doing hybrid events before. It just wasn't called hybrid. It was called live stream. <laughs> there we go. Right? <laughs> right? And so event hosts would do it because like, oh my gosh, this sounds so cool. There are people that always say they want to come, but they can't because they can't fly or they can't get childcare or whatever. And so they were like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to live stream my event. And then most event hosts that live stream their event maybe did it once or twice and was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so much work. It's, yeah. I mean, it really is. And you got to try and do stuff to keep the live streamers engaged and the in-person. It's just my personal view, my personal view, pick one, pick a horse and ride it. But that's mm -hmm. just my personal view. I personally wouldn't host a hybrid event, but I know lots of people that are, they have the team, they have the budget for it and it goes smoothly and they love it and they do a great job bless them, go for it. It's just not my personal cup of tea. I, I like to pick a horse and ride it um, and just roll with that. But it's definitely something you need to factor in your personality. Do you want the in-person? Do your tribe want the in-person or do they, are they cool with the virtual? Cause virtual is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, people are making so much profit from virtual because the costs are so much lower um, and people are still buying high ticket items from virtual events. So it's, it's like, you know, a lot of people were like, why, <laughs> why would I go back to live and in person, you know? So it just pick, pick, yeah. you know, it's preference and knowing your people. Yeah. And that's such an interesting uh, comment because I, I brought on a new client the other day and we were talking about, we were looking at our uh, profit and loss statements from last year, not traveling. And we both were astounded at how much we were actually spending on travel and, but we made more money last year yeah. just being online. So, you know, for mm -hmm. somebody like me, who's 60, it's like, where's my incentive to go travel anymore? Mm -hmm. But I do have a question about the live versus the live stream. So I've been to a lot of events and, and I want to know what you think about this from an offer standpoint. I've been to a lot of events where the guru in the room just thinks they are, you know, God and don't touch me, like my time off the stage is my time. And then I look at the people who are super accessible in the last year online, because I feel like you do have to be more accessible when you do the online events. The trust factor that's built there with the more accessible you are as the host on these. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because a lot of people want to have an event, but they don't want to be seen. It's that like mm -hmm. passive aggressive thing that people do. I want to be famous, but I don't want anybody to know me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so true. And, you know, listen, I, I've struggled with that myself in the past, um, you know, about being seen and all, oh, am I perfect for the camera or whatever? No, <laughs> none of us are. Okay. We're, we're, we're not all tens. Most of us aren't tens, right? If we do our hair and makeup, maybe we're six or a seven on a good day. <laughs> Damn girl. I'm going to turn this off now. I think she just insulted us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, man. <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's okay. You know what? Um, but the, but the thing is you can't be a success and be a secret. Yeah. You can't be a success and be a secret. And listen, I'm borrowing that from someone else. I heard that from someone else. Can't remember who right now, but it, it, when I heard that, I was like, man, that's so true. Oh, that hurts. But man, that's so true. You can't be a success and be a secret. So especially in the world that we live in today, that we have so many gifts from this virtual world um, that we live in. We can be anywhere on a laptop and be making money and run our businesses. So there's gifts to it. But the, the, the pullback at the same time is we have the sphere of being seen. 
but we have to use that to our advantage. We, we have to, it's just non-negotiable. In the world that we live in today, you have to be seen, you have to be visible, whether it's speaking, whether it's writing a book, whether it's hosting events, you have to be visible and put yourself out there because when something crazy like COVID happens, those offline strategies are now gone. So you have to have both. You have to have both online and offline, and you can't be afraid to be visible. Otherwise, your business is just not going to succeed. So it's just something that we have to push past. Um, and, you know, it, confidence only comes from doing. Confidence only comes from doing. And the more that we do it, the more we do the Facebook lives, we do the Instagrams, we do the TikToks, we do the Zoom, we do our events, we speak on stages, you get more comfortable with it. And you realize that people are so busy thinking about what they say and how they look that they're not paying attention to you. Oh, <laughs> they don't that care. is so true. And I love that, that you have to go out and do it. Um, I was playing golf it last night and uh, one of the youngsters with us, she's not that young, but I think she's like 22, 23. She said, oh, I don't want to hit that because I'll fail. And all of us older folks looked at her and we're, we're like, we fail every day. What's your problem? <laughs> like, and we do, when you think about it, we all fail every single day at something. And most of us pick right back up and do it again because it takes practice. Yeah. To, to get really good at these things. So a uh, great example, you guys, if you go back and listen to my first podcast, it's tragic. Like I listen to, <laughs> I'm like 160 in now, but uh, yeah, that first one. And the first one's yeah. the one that people listen to the most. Of so, course. Because <laughs> they find you and then they go back and they go, oh, I think I'll listen from the beginning. And you know, you suck at those first couple of times, but it gets better. Yeah. And you know what people also love right now? being real and yeah. being vulnerable. So when you make mistakes, it's actually endearing, right? Yeah. When you trip on your words and you can't read the bio, right? People don't care. They laugh. <laughs> They're like, Oh, that Juliet. Well, she's so sweet. Right. So, you know, it's like people want human. And so, you know, what you were saying earlier, Juliet, with people at the events with that guru nose up in the air and I'm this, and I'm that, and my time off the stage is People are done with that garbage. Yeah. They, they don't care about that crap anymore. It's like who we've all been, well, maybe not all. I'll say me, I'll own. We've heard the statements. I've heard the statements. Who do you think you are? And that kind of comes back up when we see someone that's kind of got the nose in the air. It's like, dude, why do you, you don't need to act like that. You know, that's not approachable. People don't want to work with someone like that. The, the idolitis, you know, type of thing is gone that people used to have at events because people get the game and in the world that we live in with so much garbage going on, no one has time for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I was at an event in summer of 2018 and I pretty much announced that guru marketing was over and uh, it was at this dinner table and there were a couple bigger names there and they're like, no, it's not. I'm like, yeah, it is. And those people during COVID yeah. They'll flat on their faces. They didn't, they yeah. didn't know what, because I think a lot of those older guru types also yeah. have not developed the teams and the systems the way that uh, a lot of us smaller people, action takers have. And that's mm -hmm. what I found during that time period is, is one of them called me and said, I need help. And I'm like, are you going to pay me? And he's like, no, I'm, I won't say his name. And right. I was like, well, yeah, I, I don't work for free. See ya. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> and I think a lot of them are very used to that, that people will just dive at the chance to work for them because they're that big name, but it never mm -hmm. gets you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And, and you really just hit on the second core um, piece to having a six figure event um, is the marketing side. We talked about strategy. That was number one. The second though is marketing and the people, uh, what they need to realize is that marketing is always morphing and changing. Yes. So like you just said, with the gurus, the guru marketing is, is over. I agree with you a hundred percent. There may be some people that still will follow uh, like little puppy dogs and stars in their eyes with some of those people. But for the majority, we as a uh, species, I guess we have, a, we, <laughs> we have grown, um, you know, and the marketing that we want, the marketing that craves and the marketing that works with us today is not this, hey, look at me and my Ferrari, I'm a success. That is kind of like, okay, you look slimy. You know, that guru type marketing doesn't play anymore. What works now is being real, being vulnerable, showing the mistakes, 
Here's what's worked. And if you do show your success, you do it in a classy way and you're doing it to teach. And it's subtly telling them, hey, but look at how good I am though, right? And it's doing it in a subtle way. They make that connection themselves versus you saying and blasting in their face, look how great I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So the marketing that we do for our events has to continue to grow and change. The old way of marketing events doesn't have the same success rate as it did before. You can't just blast your list or blast social media and say, hey, I'm doing an event. Hey, you you should come. Hey, if you want to make six figures doing this or if you want to grow your business or you want to get more clients or whatever your outcome is, you can't just blast people about that. You have to educate them and you have to serve them on what is going on for them in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And the plus side for us is we got lots of material to work with (laughs) right now with what's happening in the world. COVID, Black Lives Matter, the politics and all that craziness that's happened. All of those things need to be somehow touched upon in your marketing for your events because you always have to speak to what's relevant. And that's what's relevant right now, because it doesn't matter who you are and what you do. It impacts. It impacts what they're doing. It impacts their business. It impacts your your ideal client, whoever that is. So you have to think about how is this impacting them right now? What fears are they having? What are they staring up at the ceiling at 3 a.m. and can't go to sleep? What are they worried about? Mm -hmm. And make marketing that is educational and speaking to that, speaking to that fear, speaking to that worry that they're having late at night, and then present your event as the solution. Right. Right. And say, come to this event. I understand this is, I'm with you. I dealt with this too. And this happened for me when COVID hit and, and, and so on and so forth. You have to be the white knight, be the white knight in your marketing. Um, you know, there was a a show on Netflix. Um, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, oh gosh. Now it just went out of my head. The gambit. Is it the gambit? Is that what it's called? Oh, the Queen's Gambit? The Queen's Gambit. Thank you. Yes, I knew Gambit was in there. Yes, the one about chess, right? So a a lot of people watch it. Maybe you haven't. Um, There are some good parts if you like chess and strategy. I I enjoyed it. Um, Anyways, she talks about, you know, there's power plays, right? So there's power plays in our marketing, just like there is power plays with chess. And being the white knight is one of those. Being the white knight for your audience, standing up for them, identifying what is no one else in my industry doing for them? How have they wronged them? Mm -hmm. Why are people not trusting the people in my industry anymore? What has happened and stand up and be the white knight for them and to say, here's how I'm different. Here's what's different. I know this has happened. I know you've had this experience, but here's how I'm different. And here's, here's how we're going to solve that. And here's how you create the result. So when you do that and you step up and you show that I'm different, I've been there and here's how we can fix that in your event marketing and you position your event as the solution, people naturally will register for the event because it stands out above and beyond all the other people that are just blasting and saying, hey, my event is on October 10th. You should definitely come because this big speaker and this big speaker and this big speaker is coming. If, versus if you say, if you're tired of wondering where your next client is going to come from, if you're tired you know, and sick and tired of worried about X, Y, Z, right? This event is going to show you the three steps to do this. This event is going to show you and help you walk away with a blueprint on X, Y, Z, right? You do it in a way that's educating them and serving them. You're going to get high quality attendees. um, And that's most important, right? High quality attendees at your event. The people that really resonate with you and your message, that's who you want because those are your buyers. And we want buyers. We don't just want butts and seats. We want buyers and seats, right? Right, right. Right. So the third pillar, the offer. Um, many years ago, I coached for someone and I remember he was putting his offer together and me and one of the other coaches who had the main, the main people in there, we were just, we were flummoxed by this offer because we knew that as coaches for the group, it couldn't, it was, it was a deliverable that couldn't have been delivered. Hmm. 
And here we have a coach who, you know, the head guy who had never done any of this himself. He had a team, he, you know, and here he was, this is what he was selling. Mm. So tell me about when you're crafting that offer. Cause I will tell you that only about 20 people in a room of 300 bought the offer and zero of them were successful at the end of the year mm. on the deliverable. So Tell me about the offer. What, when you put that together and, and how do you ensure that your offer once it's purchased is delivered? Yeah. Well, one word, integrity. <laughs> integrity. I mean, really it, it has to start with that because you shouldn't be making an offer from the stage. And, and I don't think that's a huge issue because I, I know that most people, if not all the people listening to this have integrity and they are listening to you, Juliet, because they believe in you. They, they know your heart and that you are on a mission to help and serve other people and that you're sincere and genuine. So you're only going to attract people that are like that as well. So it's, it's rare. It's rare um, that that's going to happen, but you always have to start with your offer. Make sure that, yes, I can actually deliver on this. That's just integrity mm -hmm. at the end of the day is making sure that if I'm going to make this offer, I've helped other people do this before they've gotten results there's always going to be a few that don't because maybe they just don't do the program. They don't show up. Yeah. They don't do the work. It happens. Or they start to listen and then they decide, no, I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to listen to Juliet. That happens. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know better than the person that I hired. That's an expert. I'm going to do it. my. <laughs> it happens. They do that. They do that infrequently, but they do do that. It happens. It happens. Right. Um, or just life happens and they're not able to use what they purchased at that time or whatever. But for the people, if you know in your bones, listen, if they follow what I say, if they do this, I know 100% they will get the result if they do the work, um, then you can in all integrity make that offer, whatever the price point is. And that's why one of the ways that I, I teach my clients when they're, when they're doing their offer and I help them craft their offer is I say, what is an insane guarantee that we can give them that no one else would have the rocks to give them? Because you know, 100%, if they did all the work, they would get this result, right? So whenever I host my own events or I make an offer from the stage, I give a crazy, insane guarantee. And you know how many times people have invoked that guarantee? How many? Zero. Zero. Zero, right? So I did an event where it was like $1,500 ticket to attend the event, um, to come to my event. Oh, I think it was 2000 and it was in LA. And I said, you come to this event. And if at the end of these three days together with me at this intensive, this was like boot camp style, right? This was come right. sketch out your event, start to finish, flush out your messaging for your event, flush out your offer done in three days. Um, you know, $2,000 come to LA, we'll get this done. And if at the end of these three days, you don't feel like what you've learned is going to help you host a six figure event. I'm going to write you a check on the spot for your two grand. Zero, zero people, because I knew with full integrity, I know myself, I know that they're going to make money from this. I know that they're going to get the results. So if I know if I can stand in full confidence and in integrity, I can make that offer. So uh, I teach a very different approach when it comes to making offers that it's from the heart right? Heart selling, not hard selling <laughs> as if it's my best friend across the table. And she's telling me about a disease that she just got. And she's telling me about all the problems that she has and everything that she's struggling with this. And I went to this holistic practitioner and then I went to this specialist and I went to this doctor and they are saying this, but then that person said, no, don't listen to them. You should do this because that's the struggle that we have today, right? There's so many gurus out there. Oh no, you should do this. No, that person's wrong. You should do that right? That's the experience that people are having. But I can say to her and look her in the eyes and say, listen, I get it. <laughs> I'm hearing the same mixed messages. I've been there. I've dealt with that. And here's what I found in my experience to be the solution. In my experience, this is the solution. And here's why. And here's why that didn't work. And when I tried that, this is what happened. And here's why this is the solution. Please, 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 please. I have it right here. Take it. I know this will work for you 100%. So if you approach it when you're making an offer as if you're speaking to your best friend across the table, we don't have to have this nose in the air. Oh, you should do my program because I'm amazing and you're going to make this and you're going to do that. We don't have to sell from that standpoint anymore. People want real. They want human. They want connection. They want to feel heard. They want to feel seen. 
and they want to feel understood. Oprah said that with all of her interviews that she did, didn't matter who she interviewed, didn't matter if it was a Saudi and Arabian prince, didn't matter if it was Jennifer Lopez, didn't matter if it was a pedophile, didn't matter if it was a past president. Every single one of them at the end of the interview, you know what they said, Juliet? What? <laughs> was this good? Was that okay? Did you get what you wanted? They all wanted to know that they did a good job. Right. Did she hear them? Did she see them? Did she understand them? Everyone at the end of the day wants that. So when we make an offer from the stage, when we do our marketing to promote the event, when we strategize the event, are we making sure that they feel seen, they feel heard, and they're understood? And if you do that in your strategy, if you do that in your marketing, and you do that in your offer, you're golden. And you can stand in full integrity and know, I know them. I know what they need. I know I have the solution. Come join me. Fantastic. So where can we find you if we want to find out more about what you do and how you do it? And you're our would, girl. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to it. Yeah. I would see the best place to connect with me is actually to learn a little bit more about yourself, learn a little bit more about yourself and your business and, and your events. So whether you've done an event before Um, and you know that you could make more or you haven't done an event and you want to learn more about it, I would go to eventprofitquiz.com, www.eventprofitquiz.com. Nothing's plural, eventprofitquiz.com. And when you take this quiz, it's really fun because it, it goes into not just the three areas I talked about, it talks about four. So there's a bonus surprise there that you're going to learn about. And it helps you look at on a scale of one to 10 and figure out what are your strengths? Where do I need to strengthen these pillars? Where am I a rock star in? Um, and it really helps you learn more about the events. And then when you take the quiz, we have customized content that then educational um, information that will go to you based off of the answers on your quiz. So go to eventprofitquiz.com now and you can take that quiz and you'll also get a way to connect with me from there. Um, and so we can continue the journey together if you want more information. Um, but it's just a fun quiz to take too. And it takes like less than two minutes. It's super simple. So very, very good. Thank you so much for being on today. Absolutely. Happy to be here.